Hello! Before I will start my discussion, I want you to show the most recent accident involving cranes in my country in the Philippines. So, we will get, uh, we will learn from it, we will comment from it, and maybe give me at least one, what is the most, uh, what is your first observation in this uh, accident? Game over. Now, based on the picture and the clip that uh, that I saw, I have only I will give only two two question out of my hundreds of observation. First, why is it that there are pedestrians near the radius of the walking near the walking radius of the crane? Second thing. Second question, who authorized the crane to move? Because as of as of now they are blaming the driver but it's it's not the it's not the 100% driver's fault. When I see the the video, it looked like this. This is the boom of the crane. In order to the crane will move Maybe they will try to move the crane forward because they have some, th some activity in the other side. The crane will uh, lift his boom high so he can move forward. Because if he, if he do like this, the boom will hit the column. So he lift his boom and then tip over. Tip over, hit the, the steel girder and the steel girder fall down and hit the pedestrian so uh, now so what that is the, the the first the first observation the first uh, the, my first observation is why is it that there are pedestrians in the operating area and the second is who authorized the crane to move now what is yours So now, I will discuss to you the uh, lifting or the heavy lifting activities here in the Metro Project. What are the requirements? What are uh, types of lift, gears, like that? Using cranes, of course. Uh, so this is, a part, uh, this is your crane. This, is, uh, this type of crane is a rough terrain. And this is its part. From the top, warning light or anemometer. Uh, this is the main boom, telescopic boom, uh, load, uh, load movement indicator cable, hill or base section, main auxiliary, auxiliary hoist drum, counterweight, outriggers, uh, outrigger pads, the, uh, outrigger pads, the, this the circle one, or outrigger pads, operator cab, the carrier, the boom lift cylinder, Extension jib, uh, main uh, main hook, main hook block, the auxiliary hook block, main hoist line, uh, auxiliary hoist line, bob weights, and the tip sheave. So these are the parts of your crane. Next is the safety device for mobile crane. The safety devices of the mobile cranes are this one, the force transducer. <coughs> this will alarm if you over pull your uh, over the hook block will hit this one if you over pull that one will alarm next the load moment indicator which is located inside the cabin the the two anti two block switch running line tensioner the length and angle sensor and the junction box so the load moment indicator, this is located inside. Make sure that your crane is calibrated. What is the data here is also the actual data in, uh, in performing. If you, if you retract your boom, <coughs> it will appear here. So again, 
make sure that the load moment indicator or your LMI is working properly and gives the correct information with regards to crane parts of, of line use, boom angle, radius, boom tip height, boom length, maximum load that can be lifted and the total load being lifted. So that is, that is it. Um, you, you just make sure that this, this uh, uh, thing is working, working properly. As an operator also, you must double check also your equipment. So components of a safe, safety lift. So first, must be check uh, the good weather condition. Second, check the power lines. Third, you must ins uh, position the inspected crane. Fourth, uh, operated by a trained operator. Second, uh, next is fully extended outriggers with outrigger pads. Next, electrical grounding rod must be installed. Next, functioning overloading and other safety devices such as anemometer and others just like I previously discussed. Next is inspected lifting gears. Next, the load rigged by a certified rigger. Next is total barrication. Total barrication uh, barricade the whole perimeter of the lifting radius. In case of night, night lift, lightings must be provided. Next, complete with signages, flagman, and other crowd control personnel. Wind condition must be uh, always be monitored. When wind condition will uh, reach 20 meter per hour, operator or other personnel may stop the operation. And lastly, permits. The permit must be all signed and approved. So this is, these are the components of a safety lift. The type of lifting that we are, uh, we are performing here, we have three types of lifting that we are performing here. First is the basic or repetitive lift. That is uh, from zero to 10 ton. And the rigor, the requirement of the rigor that can work of this type of lift is uh, rigor level three. Second, standard lift. A standard lift is from 10 up to 40 ton. The rigor that can work here is level 2, the rigor level 2. And the third, uh, the third lift is the critical or tandem lifts. 40 ton upwards, it will require rigor level 1 in working in this kind of lift. So I will give you a sample of uh, crane. I have a picture of mine. Uh, we are doing tandem lift when we are installing the launching girder. So this is the uh, sample of a tandem lift. We are using here a 1,200 uh, crane. I think this is a lib here. <coughs> tandem with a 750-ton crane. We are installing the launching girders. So, what are the requirements of lifting? We proceed. So, number one requirement of lifting is the lifting plan. I will teach you later how to compute the loads. Only basic computation, not those type of uh, critical ones. Second thing, competency of equipment <coughs> and gears. TUV. For the crane, for your gear, and for your operatives. Third, the risk assessment. This is to be di discussed together with the safety department or if the, uh, it will be performed in a sub, uh, subcontractor, a third party. The safety team of the third party will provide you this one and you will discuss it together. Together with the job safety analysis. 
And lastly, toolbox stock. The toolbox stock, the paper should be signed uh, of all the operatives in uh, of all the yes of all the in operatives involved in the activity. Now, this is a sample of a lifting plan. I will teach you later how to compute the loads. In the lifting plan, you can see the type of crane, capacity, the boom, the counterweight, uh, description of lift. <coughs> Second page. Uh, make sure that the, the rigger one will sign, that's me. The crane operator, the rigger, and the site manager will sign. Make sure that these four people will sign the, the lifting plan. And make also sure that your lifting plan is updated. Next, the load chart and range diagram. This is only a sample. This is the load chart and range diagram of crane, uh, rough terrain crane, sunny crane, SRC, 350 model. <coughs> you can see the load chart. You can see the load chart in the internet. You just type the model of the crane and it will, it will appear. If you don't have internet, the load chart, you can be found this one paste in the, inside the cabin. Every crane have different, every crane, every model have different load charts. So, next is the competency of the equipment, gears, operatives, TUV. TUV, here in Saudi Arabia, we need TUV to, to for example, you are an uh, operator, you need to be certified that you are trained. And TUV is one of, uh, TUV is a German term. For, TUV is like a license. It's just a license to, is certification that you are that proving that you are trained person for the job so for the crane you have a certified <coughs> you have a, certif a certificate that the crane was is inspected and make sure that the the certificate is not expired or ex uh, you cannot you cannot proceed to your lift if the certificate is expired this is for the crane and this is for the lifting gear. Next, lifting gear samples. Samples of lifting gear are spread, <coughs> spreader, excuse me, spreader beams, uh, lifting chains. The, the lifting chains are four leg, three leg, two leg, and one leg. Lifting belts. Shackles, this is sample of a uh, bow shackle, D shackle, and a hook. Lifting eye also. So, for lifting belts, there are different colors of lifting belts. Different color meaning different capacity, different length, different meter, and different weight. So, this is a sample of the, the web sling load limits. So violet have different uh, corresponding weight. If you put it on straight, if you put it in choke, basket type, 45 basket, and 90 degree basket. So example of competency, co competency of the operatives is when we are working here in, my, in our site, we required also to <coughs> show your national ID this one, the insurance of the operative and the TUV. TUV involving this one, uh, stating that the mobile crane operator, and also you need to specify what tonnage that this guy can operate. For example, he, uh, he can operate up to 100 ton. It must be also written here. This is only for the crane operator. Next is for the rigger. 
For the Rieger also, it's the same. The Rieger, uh, the national ID, the insurance, the... What's this? The TUV of the Rieger. Rieger level 3. Rieger 3, one or more Rieger depending on the operation. So, next is me, the lifting supervisor, uh, the guy who possesses a Rieger 1 level. Uh, that's me. So, also need the uh, national ID, also need the uh, uh, insurance, also need the... Uh, this is my old rigger. Uh, I, I already renew, but I didn't scan my my new TUV card. Uh, the TUV card is stating that you are rigger level 1 and your certification is not expired. So now... Uh, we will proceed to the PPE, the protective uh, personal protective equipment, and others that I am using during the uh, during and every time that we have lift uh, lifting here. So first, of course, the the blue uniform that we are using is standard in Saudi. <coughs> Next, the the green reflectorized vest. Why I use green reflectorized vest? Is it because most our standard of uh, vest here is orange. To separate the color of my team and the standard of uh, rigor, rigor lifting team here is green. Also the helmet. And with gloves, uh, what's this? Uh, safety goggles and of course the safety shoes. I have also additional uh, equipment during the lifting and these are two-way radio I use two-way radio if in case the landing area I use radio and two riggers one from the ground and one from the top if the area of uh, uh, the landing area we, we cannot the, the operator cannot see the landing area we use radio to communicate in up uh, up and down next megaphone if too much crowded, if too much crowded in the area of operation, we use megaphone and of course, lastly, the whistle to be issued of all the riggers involving the operation.